Hey everyone, and welcome to the Dota 2 Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you get started with new heroes in Dota 2. As always, a link to my Twitch is down in the description below if you'd like to join the action live. And if you'd like to support this series, pressing the like button is the best thing you can do for the YouTube algorithm. Trust me, it makes a huge difference. That being said, let's talk about Yonaro the Juggernaut for position 1 hard carry. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Alex, why the hell are you talking about Juggernaut? He didn't get buffed. Uh, why aren't you talking about one of the cool carries, like Spectre or someone that got buffed? Well, the reason for this is because... Juggernaut, his win rate went up. And this is one of the crazy things about Dota. And I've actually talked to a couple of my high MMR friends, and they're not really sure why either, because Juggernaut went from low 50% win rate to basically 54 to 55% win rate after the patch. And no one's really sure why, because he didn't get buffed, and none of his counters really got nerfed. But the meta shifted, and now Juggernaut's the beneficiary, and we're going to talk about him, because at a 55% win rate from Herald to Ancient, it's a little lower than the higher MMRs, you'll take it, right? You'll take it. Now, if you're a new player, Juggernaut has some inherent complexity to him. He's often recommended as a great new new uh, kind of beginner hero, and that's fair, but he also has some complexity to him, so I'm going to discuss it. I'm trying to be as clear as possible. So first thing, you are going to focus on Blade Fury in your early levels. It is such an early kill threat. It really helps you secure the lane. And then you're going to take a value point in Healing Ward and Blade Dance, which is valuable, and then you're taking your Omni Slash, of course. Now, with regards to his buildup, you're going to, you're going to take the uh, as much stats as you can up front, a value Wraith Band into Phase Boots. Some pros do go Power Treads. Phase Boots is much more common, however. The major decision you have to make as a Jug, and this is kind of tricky, so I'll explain it as best I can, is whether you build Maelstrom or Battle Fury as your first major item. The reason for this is because they're both farming items. They're both items that allow you to farm effectively on the map, and that's what Juggernaut wants to do. However, the type of game you build Maelstrom is different than the type of game you build Battle Fury. So basically, if you have a farming mid, a mid that is very greedy, someone like an alchemist, a medusa, a drow, a quap, or anything like that, you're going to want to go maelstrom so you're active online. So you could be more of a tempo core. If you have a tempo mid, right, a TA is a great example of a farming mid as well. If you have a tempo mid, someone like a storm spirit, a puck, you know, uh, the, a mid that likes to be much more active in the early game and much more kind of like of a trendsetter early on, you can go Battle Fury and you're the farming core. The reason for this is because Battle Fury is two times more expensive, but it farms significantly faster. So if you're in a situation where you have a Medusa mid and you're a Juggernaut and you build Battle Fury, you guys are going to be on top of each other trying to farm the same areas often. Now, Juggernaut's a little unique in the sense as well because you can still get away with it because you can farm the enemy side of the map because you can Blade Fury into TP unless they have BKB piercing uh, abilities. Regardless, so you can kind of take the enemy side of the map. You should be actually, but you generally want to build Maelstrom where you have a farming mid and you're going to build a Battle Fury when you are the farming carry, okay? That is, there's some more complexity to even that, but if you're just starting as Juggernaut, that is kind of the main decision you make. Generally speaking, if you're not sure, you're never going to be upset with Maelstrom into Manta, Aghanims, uh Shard, and Scepter. And once you get the Scepter, you're going to go Blink into Basher. Now, the reason why you're doing this progression is because you're going to have a mini Omni Slash, you're going to have the main Omni Slash, and the mini Omni Slash, when you blink in, it's going to proc the Skull Basher almost every single time, you're getting a, the added effect of the Maelstrom passive, you're doing the tremendous amount of damage from the Manta style, you also have it so that you can dispel um, Roots, Silences, and things along those lines, and then finally finish it off with a Swift Blink, the Swift Blink is fantastic, because it really levels up your Omni Slash and your uh, mini Slash, so, uh, your Swift Slash, I should say, but anyways, it's fantastic, and from there, you then finish off your Mjolnir from your Maelstrom, you have your basher you get your abyssal blade there's so many different options with juggernaut he's a very versatile hero but if you're just getting started this is a build that i would recommend uh you know kind of going forward with at the end of the day he's a hero that has seen a resurgence in his win rate mid 50s you can't go wrong juggernaut is back in the meta by golly has it been a long time since we've talked about your boy zeus zeus has been in a really sad place a really sad place and you know what i love to see because zeus is one of my favorite mids to play he has a very straightforward play style if you are new to the game and you want to play mid zeus is one of those heroes that's in a very reliable mid and uh, i actually did a full beginner's guide on him i'll link it up above uh it's very helpful if you're just starting uh, as uh, the hero With that being said 
Zeus is in one of those situations where his win rate isn't too hot right now. It's getting better. But the key thing is, is that he's received a bunch of buffs, including a ton of damage buffs to his Arc Lightning, and also a buff to Lightning Bolt as well, allowing to have a shorter cast point, which is extremely valuable, especially with someone like Zeus, who ultimately, ultimately builds something like a Nocturne Core and is casting nearly nonstop. So let's talk about his build. So basically what you're doing here is you're focusing in on Arc Lightning. Now, some people like to take a Lightning Bolt at uh, level 2. I prefer Heavenly Jump and Lightning Bolt value point at 4. This is generally what pros are doing as well. With that being said, Arc Lightning is kind of your bread and butter here. You're using it to last hit. And what you're essentially doing is when you're playing Meta Zeus, your goal is to use Arc Lightning to push the uh, your wave under their tower. You actually want to push the lane as aggressively as you can. Keep pressure on the enemy mid so that they're under their tower last hitting while you're taking the small camp. You do that a couple times, your net worth is going to be ahead. You're going to be able to get your items faster and you're going to be able to punish that mid. Okay. You're going to want to make sure with starting items, you're taking as much regen as you can. You're getting that early bottle as a Zeus. If you don't have mana, you're essentially useless. Okay. You're, doing, you're going double null talisman into arcane boots. You disassemble the arcane boots. You finish Aether Lens. You get your shard, your Ag Scepter, and then you get boots of travel. The reason for the boots of travel is not necessarily so you can like move across the map and like split push like some bot heroes can do. That is also beneficial for Zeus. But it's also because he's super vulnerable. He needs the actual movement speed. If anyone gets on top of Zeus, he's basically in trouble. He has Heavenly Jump, which was recently added to help him kind of survive. But he's in trouble. And that's why the, the movement speed talent, which I know many people don't take. They prefer the mana regen. But the movement speed talent has a tremendous impact on the win rate of the hero. It's actually significantly higher if you pick this, this talent. And that as well with the HP. If you just give Zeus some added survivability, he does so much damage already. Mana does not necessarily become an issue once you start building out your items, okay? And you start kind of leveling up. Heavenly Jump Target is actually really good. These are all great talents, but the one that really stands out is the movement speed for the win rate percentage. Anyways. With that being said, ultimately, you are going to upgrade your Aether Lens to an Octarine Core, finishing with a Refresher Orb so that you can do a double Thunder God's Wrath. Now, the important thing about Thunder God's Wrath as well, especially if you're new to the game, is that people underestimate it as an ability to scout. They, they you know, if, are they in Roshan? Boom, use it, right? You find it out. It's also very important to note that Thunder God's Wrath can be very useful if you have initiating cores that benefit from vision. So, the vision granted by Thunder God's, Thunder God's Wrath can be very beneficial for your cores or for initiators to be jumping on enemies with proper vision. Vision wins games of Dota, and Thunder God's Wrath gives you vision on the entire enemy team, so it can be extremely valuable from that perspective as well. With that being said, Zeus still has some way to go to be like a top meta uh, core, but he recently got buffed, and he's still relatively straightforward to play if you're a beginner to Dota 2. I am so excited to talk to you about Position 3 Lycan. If you've been watching my stream, you know I love playing off lane. You know it's my favorite position, even though I've been playing a ton of safe lane for the MMR purposes, okay? But Lycan is one of my favorite off laners in Dota. I love playing him, and he's been outside the meta for some time, which kind of breaks my heart. But what's happening now is he actually received a couple buffs, namely in his attack speed, which is insane. It's basically like half a gloves of haste, and his summon wolves got buffed as well. Now, one thing to note is the summon wolves are actually still weaker than they were than a few patches ago like summon wolves got absolutely destroyed in recent patches so they actually brought it back up just a bit but lycan is seeing a resurgence as this kind of like creep centric kind of tower pusher that has a uh, kind of momentous impact on the mid game let's talk about him okay now with that being said i'm gonna be spamming lycan on my stream i absolutely love lycan i can't wait to try him out a little more but there's some complexity to the way he's played because of the uniqueness of the way he is piloted that being said, if you're new to Dota and you're new to being offlane, I really recommend you go summon wolves into two points of Feral Impulse. The added HP regeneration for Feral Impulse and the added bonus damage for uh, last hitting is going to help you significantly in the laning stage. It really helps to solidify your laning stage. If you are having a good lane, then get your uh, summon wolves at three, which allows you to harass the opponent and get some last hits as well. But if you're struggling, it's a harder lane, do not hesitate to take double points in uh, Feral Impulse, okay? Do not do not underestimate the amount of bonus damage and HP regeneration this thing's going to give you. With that being said, uh, you are going to be focusing in on getting the Helm of the Dominator, focusing in on the Helm of Iron Will first because you want the armor and you want the HP regeneration. Lycan has low armor. 
okay he's not great in lane he's weak at level one and so you're going to want to get this helm of the dominator and then you're going to take a value ring of basilius because he has severe mana problems and the nice thing about ring of basilius it actually builds into the vladimir's offering that is part of the helm of the overlord also helm of the overlord got buffed okay so it does it does a bonus uh kind of a lifesteal which is great as uh, that is exactly what you wanted you got bonuses on the helm of the other underlord from uh from lichen standpoint lichen's wolves got buffed his attack speed got buffed which helps him to last hit and do additional damage it's huge and then you're taking the shard if you're unfamiliar with the shard what the shard does is it basically takes one of his wolves and every 30 seconds when the lane spawns it puts a random it, it picks a random lane and sends one wolf down the lane this wolf is the same wolf that you have on your basically your talent so if you have level four wolves this wolf has cripple which means that it will not only do damage over time to units and towers but it'll actually slow the attack speed of towers themselves what's significant about the shard is that it is basically like a hands off you, you pay 1400 gold at 15 minutes and you're always pushing lanes your team fundamentally has more laning pressure than the enemy team does not only this but anytime that wolf in the lane gets a kill on a creep you get the bounty you get the gold and the experience however the other important thing to note is that wolf also benefits from howl so if you want to push the waves even faster when you notice that the wolf is in lane against kind of like the enemy wave if you howl you reduce the attack damage of the enemy wave therefore pushing the lane even faster so you can create so much map pressure with the aghanim shard it is so damn good now some people have been picking it up before they finish helm of the overlord but the problem is is the helm of the overlord is such a significant power spike it's usually recommended you delay this like usually you're finishing this at about 16 minutes you get this by 20. okay that's kind of what you're going for as opposed to getting this at 15 and getting this at 21. it's not worth it with that being said drones of endurance again as a lichen you want to be kind of like a team fight centric hero who pushes lanes gets in the team fights pushes objectives and you can do that the amount of attack speed and damage being done by your summons with the drums of endurance is huge it also benefits your team because realistically you want to benefit your team as a team fighter lichen has drums and howl that's it right you basically shape shift you get onto the weak supports and you try and wreak havoc but like you're not a great team fighter and the drums of endurance and the assault curious really help to solidify your presence in a team fight with that being said it's also important you might think alex the summon wolves is great the howl reduction is good too these are great talents he actually has fantastic talents although you're focusing on pushing waves you would think that the summon wolves the extra wolf hp and the feral impulse damage would be what you want to take but without the shapeshift reduction and the shapeshift duration talents Lycan can feel like a creep. He can feel useless. And because without shapeshift, you are super vulnerable and super weak. Not only that, but your summons are weaker because the summons benefit from shapeshift. So the, the reduced shapeshift cooldown and the increased shapeshift duration allows you to basically be more active with your team. It can feel terrible, terrible as a Lycan to not be able to be shapeshifted during a team fight. So that is why you take those two talents and the shapeshift critical chance is just too damn good. Regardless, Lycan is back in the meta. It's so exciting if you're an offlaner and you want to try something interesting. And if you're afraid of micro heroes, Lycan is actually not all that bad from a micro hero perspective. He's one of the more manageable ones. And if you want to get started learning micro heroes, Lycan's your guy. All right, so I was going to do this section by just going Nick, 66666 over and over again. I thought that would have been funny. Um, but it uh, isn't very educational, so let's actually talk about Nyx properly. Regardless, he got buffed. Nyx is one of the position forwards that got buffed. Impale got buffed. Wider radius, which is absolutely huge because it is... Okay, if you've played Nyx, you've missed Impale. You've missed his stun. It's so damn embarrassing. It's one of the harder stuns to land in the game. I don't know why. But anyways, that got buffed, which is great. And that is enough to bring him back into the meta. His win rate's not super hot right now. Like, he's not bro... Like, Nyx has gone through phases where, like, Vendetta got buffed to the point that like, he was just one-shotting dudes like crazy. That got nerfed. And he's not broken, but he's viable again. And the build is, like, super simple because Nyx has basically one playstyle right now. This is what all the pros are doing. You're going Boots, Boots Tangos, Stick, Boots, Wand... Yule Scepter Divinity to get rid of dusts and uh, silences. And then eggs, which basically makes you play tower defense. <laughs> like, it, this is literally how people are playing. This is all the item build is. You, this is what you're doing. If you finish eggs, then you're, you're farmed as a Nyx 4. Like, you basically play tower, tower defense as Nyx. You get Boro, you get in there, you impale, you do all your skills from a, a wide distance. You're in the ground, you're invisible unless you're revealed. 
it's really neat it's really neat you can also vendetta out of it which is awesome if you want to be mobile it's a cool it's a cool scepter like i know why people like it and it is really valuable with that being said if you want to do some fancy pants stuff you can of course do the dag and stuff you can you can build support items like four staff bongo boots if you really want although that no one's doing that but realistically nyx is being played with the eggs that is all people are doing if you want to get spicy and you want to do a dagon with an e-blade e then like go for it it's super hot i love it if you're if you're doing it please send me a clip i want to see it but uh realistically the way people are playing nyx right now and i know this is like i'm not doing enough service here but like literally people just build eggs and play td <laughs> like that's what's happening right now but regardless talent wise you're focusing in on pale you're focusing in on your your hp with that being said his spell amp is actually pretty cool especially if you want to go uh you know if you want to do some stuff with like e-blade dagon and you want to burst guys with the uh, mana burn stuff like that regardless nyx assassin back in the meta got a couple buffs i mean some people are gonna be miserable about this but me i don't mind it one of the most popular position fives in dota 2 and also the most wrongly suggested new player hero in dota 2 is crystal maiden guys i'm telling you right now this is the biggest bait for new players so many people are like oh crystal maiden the ideal support if you're a new player it's like man that's why new players feed non-stop and get reported because they play guys like crystal maiden that are actually conceptually difficult to play i can go off on this all day long about crystal maiden is not an ideal new player hero but anyways i digress I actually did a full beginner's guide on Crystal Maiden. I'll link it up above if you want to check it out. But anyways, Crystal Maiden is actually surprisingly challenging to play. Not like functionally, you, you hit a couple buttons, but you have to be well positioned. She has no escape. She's squishy as hell. She's super, super slow. You are going to die a lot. But with this build, maybe, just maybe, you'll survive. Let's talk about it. She got a couple buffs. Where she got buffed specifically was Freezing Field. Now you're thinking, Alex, Freezing Field, what's so special about that? Now, first of all, a lot of players conceptually think that freezing field is like the biggest like it's it's her ultimate ability but it's really not her most valuable ability because she basically uses it, she dies she gets stunned whatever you very rarely get a, like an epic freezing field off but valve tried to change that they increased the explosion radius of the actual a lot of people thought it was like a straight up aoe thing it is an aoe thing but it has like explosions that occur inside that actually do the damage the big thing is, is that the slow has been increased by 10%, which is huge. So if you're stuck in it, you are stuck in it. Because a few patches ago, they reduced the radius. The other thing is that the cooldown is now a flat 90 seconds. That is a huge difference from what it was before. So now, you can actually take it at level 6 and not feel like an idiot. Okay? So, with that being said, how is CM being built right now? You're focusing in on Value Point and Frostbite and Arcane Aura, Crystal Nova, right? She's a super strong laner, by the way. Use your mana. You take your regen up front. You're going Tranquil Boots into Soul Ring because you want the added HP from the strength. You want the added armor. And you want the ability to basically use Soul Ring and your abilities because the Tranquil Boots don't get broken by Soul Ring. Moreover, you want a defensive item. Glimmer Keep, Force Staff, whatever it is. You also want the Shard. One thing that people often don't realize is that what's happening now, and a lot of the pros are testing, is Freezing Field is better. It got buffed. So how can you use that as a CM? Well, with Soul Ring, you have more HP and more armor. With Freezing Field, while you're casting, you get bonus armor. With your Shard, you're mobile while casting free Freezing Field with your armor. With BKB, you can't be stunned unless they have BKB piercing stuns. With Glimmer, you're invisible. So some people are actually doing builds where they're rushing BKBs. They're doing BKB Blink so that they can Blink in BKB, sorry, they can Blink bkb blink and then with their shard rotate around with the frozen uh, the freezing field casting all their abilities freezing people in place with frostbite and doing a tremendous amount of damage okay if you are a little too poor for that what you can try and do is go glimmer cape into blink so that they at least have to bring detection and dust and if they don't then they just eat your entire freezing field which is cool too but realistically a lot of people are testing this idea of like going bkb into blink in order to utilize the freezing field to good effect so that's kind of the, the build being tested right now if that's not the hotness that works for you do your traditional get defensive items get your boots of bearing and actually be a proper damn support but with that being said guys cm back in the meta freezing field is buffed hopefully you land a couple five man ultimates thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers thank you so much guys if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next dota 2 video